A look at Minneapolis, Minnesota. You can always count on Premier Boxing Champions to bring the Twin Cities steady boxing action. This weekend, a super welterweight title is on the line. Thrown down for the WBA regular belt will be the former champ, Erislandi Lara. He faces the veteran slugger, Ramon Alvarez, brother of Canelo. Alvarez actually skipped the fighting meetings this morning because he's struggling to make weight at this point in time. Also on Fox, undefeated 21-year-old Sebastian Fondora clashes with Cincinnati's Jamonte Clark at 154 pounds. The Fox PBC weigh-in show starts now. Here's a shot for you of the ring being built ahead of tomorrow night's return of PBC on Fox. They are inside the armory where Alvarez hopes to make weight ahead of his title opportunity against Lara. Hello, everyone. Very warm welcome to the Fox PBC weigh-in at the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. I'm Kate Abdo alongside Hall of Famer Ray Boom Boom Mancini and three-time title challenger Jose Cito Lopez. Good to see you both. Nice to see you. How are you doing? Hello. Good. Uh, Jose Cito, big fight coming up for you. You're opening up the card on September 28th on the pay-per-view. Uh, are you excited for that fight? Very and should confident. we be excited for it? Oh, absolutely, yes. I'm very excited, very motivated. Uh, we've got a big fight coming up. Um, we have a great show and a pay-per-view event and boxing at the Staples Center where I first got my nickname, the Riverside Rocky, mm -hmm. uh, a few years back. So I'm very motivated. And uh, this is one of those pay-per-view events that you definitely don't want to miss. And if you can't make it to Staples Center, you definitely want to tune in and tune in early because I'm getting the show started. Now this, to me, Josito's fight against John John Molina has a chance to be the fight of the night. This because each one of these fights are standalone fights that could be on PBC. And the fact they're all together on one card, it's, it's going to be a, a great, great, great night of boxing. Uh, Ray's not the only person who thinks you could steal the show on that night. Uh, let's take a look at the three-fight main card coming up on Saturday night on Fox at 8 Eastern. The heavyweights colliding in the opener for a 10-rounder. We've got another super welterweight bout, which follows when Sebastian Fundora faces Jamonte Clark. And for the WBA regular super welterweight title, Erislandi Lara against Ramon Alvarez in the headliner. Uh, Ray, start us off with the American dream with Erislandi Lara. Lara has got the great amateur pedigree from being from Cuba. You know, they're the staple of amateur uh, boxing. Great fundamentals, great bo high boxing IQ. Um, he's as, as difficult to fight as they come. Uh, I expect him to win tonight uh, on, on um, Saturday night, tomorrow night, because of his boxing ability and his boxing IQ. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lara has a high degree uh, in boxing. He comes from a very, very good school in boxing, so it's going to be difficult for Alvarez to pull off the victory. Um, he's going to have to. Uh, Alvarez is going to have to come in early and come in strong, uh, but. Although I give Lara an edge, I wouldn't be uh, surprised if uh, if uh, Canelo's brother can really put it on him and uh, become a third world champion for for the brother for the family. Certainly, make it a tough fight, can't he? Uh, facing Lara, excuse me, Lara is going to be Ramon Alvarez, the older brother of three division champion Canelo Alvarez, who also holds a 2014 win over Lara. So there's history there with the, between the two families. Josecito, what can you tell us more about Ramon? Look, Ramon comes to fight. Okay, in every fight, he's an action fighter. So he's going to have to put on the pressure and really dictate the pace uh, in, in, in this fight. But it's not going to be easy. Lada is a great boxer. So uh, this is one of those fights that he definitely has to impose himself on, on Lada. And, and Alvarez comes from a, another uh, boxing family. You know, great pedigree. They're all action-packed fighters, action guys who come forward and pressure, which is what he has to do to beat Lara. Uh, well, 11 years ago, all seven of the fighting Alvarez brothers actually fought on the very same card. Now it's only Ramon and his younger brother Canelo who are still fighting. If Ramon does win on Saturday night, it'll be the first time that a trio of brothers have all won titles in the same weight class. This one will be at 154 pounds. In the co-feature bout, meanwhile, the six foot seven, that's right, six foot seven, Sebastian Fondora faces Jamonte Clark in a battle of super welterweight contenders. Ray, what are you expecting in this fight? Well, this is two of the tallest opponents I mean, together, they maybe the tallest fight of, uh, of this year. Uh, Fondora is a guy who's 6'7", but he fights small. He likes to be on the inside. He likes to fight on the inside. I, I, like, I love watching this guy fight. This would be an action-packed fight, yes. Mm -hmm. Not two tall guys. You would think they'd be boxing each other. They would be standing toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yes, I'm excited for this fight. Not only are they the two tallest fighters, they're action fighters. They like to bang inside. So uh, they're going to throw a lot of punches, and it's going to be an all-action fight. 
Does Sebastian Fondori, because you said he's a fighter who doesn't necessarily fight like the taller fighter, right. does he need to do that differently in this fight? Well, maybe, you know, that's what you could ingest in the fight. There's, that's why you never have a game plan. I mean, I would, fly, talk, six, seven, I would keep him on the outside all night. You know, when he opens the guy up with the jab, throw the right hand, then step inside. You don't need to have to be on, he doesn't have to be on the inside because he's so tall. But look, he's fighting another tall guy. He likes to fight on the inside. Great. It's great for the fans. Yeah, some tall fighters tend to like to bang. Uh, you know, they won't always have to, but uh, it's just to to prove themselves, you know, more than anything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that might be his fighting style. So uh, it's an all-action fight, but it's going to be a good one. Well, we're roughly uh, 30 hours away now from fight night on Saturday. Boxing action coming your way on Fox. The American dream, Erislandi Lara, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ramon Alvarez for the super welterweight title. You can catch it all tomorrow on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Coming up, Erislandi Lara tries to hit the 154-pound mark to make his ninth straight title fight official. The weigh-in is coming up next. Let's send it out to Minneapolis with Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you, and we welcome you to the Armory here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. As Premier Boxing Champions presents the official weigh-in for our big night of action taking place right here tomorrow night. It's Fox PBC Fight Night, and it's all brought to you by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing. Well, fans, before we bring our fighters out onto the stage and then onto the scale, it is my pleasure to introduce to you a special guest joining us this afternoon and a boxing great to assist us with our weigh-in. He is here in beautiful Minneapolis not only to enjoy our big night of action, but also to support his fellow countrymen from Cuba. Ladies and gentlemen, he's one of the greats. Please welcome the former gold medalist, former two-division world champion, and former tremendous boxing star, introducing Joel El Cepillo Casamayor. All right, fans, here we go. We're going to begin with our opening bout on Fox 10 rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. First at this time, please welcome to the stage with a record of 23 wins, three losses. He has 17 wins coming by way of knockout. From Salinas, Puerto Rico, please welcome the Puerto Rican heavyweight Olympian, Victor Bisbal. And now we welcome his opponent to the stage at this time, a former Cuban national heavyweight champion, undefeated as a pro with a record of 12 wins, no losses, 10 wins coming by way of knockout, introducing Frank Sanchez. All right, fans, here we go. Let's bring our fighters to the scale at this time. First, once again, welcome the battle-ready power puncher from Puerto Rico, Victor Bisbal. Two hundred seventy five and a quarter pounds, two seventy five point two, two seventy five and a quarter pounds for Victor Bisbal. And his opponent at this time, welcome the highly decorated amateur champion, undefeated professional fighting out of Las Vegas by way of Guantanamo, Cuba, Frank Sanchez. Two hundred twenty pounds, even two twenty for Frank Sanchez. Sanchez seen as the rising prospect in this fight. What would a win do for him against Bisbal Ray? Do you think? Well, it puts him right into to the to lead heavyweights. There's not a lot of great heavyweights out there, and these guys got the great amateur pe uh, pedigree that they've talked about, and he could fight a little bit. He'll be right in the mix. There they are, ladies and gentlemen, Frank Sanchez, Victor Bisbal, a battle of hard-hitting heavyweights, our opening attraction tomorrow night on Fox.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to continue with our Super Welterweight Special Attraction. Scheduled 10 rounds of boxing. First, please welcome our fighters to the stage at this time. With a record of 14 wins, one loss. He has seven wins coming by way of knockout from Cincinnati, Ohio. They call him the Quiet Assassin. Please welcome Jamonte Clark. And we welcome to the stage his opponent at this time, undefeated at 13-0, with nine wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the undefeated, crowd-pleasing, super welterweight, known as the towering inferno, Sebastian Fundora. And our fighters are absolutely ready to step onto the scale. Weight limit on this fight, 154 pounds. First up and coming and promising super welterweight, the quiet assassin, Jamonte Clark. 154 on the nose for the quiet assassin, 154 pounds for Jamonte Clark. And his opponent, Red hot undefeated fighter known as the Towering Inferno, the undefeated Sebastian Fundora. One fifty three point four, one fifty three and a half, one fifty three point four pounds for the Towering Inferno, Sebastian Fundora. was seven inches shorter. Now he's fighting a guy who's five inches taller. How difficult is it to get set for a fighter like Sebastian Fundora? It's gotta be pretty difficult. He's a tall fighter, but uh, you know, he hasn't really got the experience with the, with the tall fighters. Both young fighters, uh, you know, one is gonna make a leap forward and one's gonna have to take a step back with the loss. So, uh, you know, it's an all action fight, but um, it's gonna be a good one. I don't remember two fighters being this tall. Facing there they are, the down. quiet assassin versus the towering inferno. Sebastian Fundora, Jamonte Clark, 10 rounds of boxing in a super welterweight special attraction. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we send it back to the studio with Kate with our main event weigh-in coming up shortly. Hey, welcome back to Los Angeles. We're currently waiting for tomorrow's main event, Ramon Alvarez, to arrive in the building. Uh, reports are that he's struggling to make weight. Uh, Ray, what's it like being his opponent in this situation? Eris Landy Lara, you've been in the building. You're waiting. You're ready. How does he feel? Well, look, I feel very confident. I made weight. I'm ready to go. You know, it's going to hurt him, you know, to try to make weight. It's going to hurt him to go through all the process now of, of sweating it out a little bit. But by fight time, you know, he's got over 24 hours to regain everything. It's really a lot to do about nothing. He'll make weight and he'll fight about it. And he'll fight tomorrow night and it'll be a great fight. Have you ever been in a, in a situation similar to this? Uh, similar. And Lara's mentality has to be, well, I want to weigh in already. I'm, I came in here. I'm in weight. Uh, I'm ready to go. So he's got to be anxious to really get this over with. But hoping also that this fight's not completely scratched, that he's not so much overweight that they can't make the fight happen. So... A lot of things got to be going through his mind right now. All right, let's take you live over to Minneapolis, to the Armory, and speak to our reporter, Heidi Andrel. Thank you very much, Kate. Well, this morning we arrived here at the Armory for our fighter meetings as per usual. Of course, Ares Landi Lara, he was punctual. He was on time, and they're a part of those meetings. Unfortunately, his opponent, Ramon Alvarez, did not show up to those meetings. Uh, we were told he was struggling to make weight. Of course, Erislandi Lara ready to weigh in here for his title fight. We are still waiting for Ramon Alvarez to enter the building. I am told he is en route. We will keep you posted. Kate, back to you. Thank you very much, Heidi. I mean, from Ramon Alvarez's perspective, it's a chance to fight for a world title. It's a chance to be an elite guy, someone seen as one of the best ever to fight in that division. Uh, if he loses that on the scale, that feels like a massive lost opportunity. Yeah, of course. It? Look, if you can't make the weight, you shouldn't be fighting at that weight. And if you f could make the weight, but you're just... Uh, over aid or you didn't do your diligence and and, and you should uh, you know the, the the discipline it takes then you don't earn you don't deserve the title so uh, to me the way he wasn't going to beat Lara Lara's too much of a technician too too like I said too much of a boxing technician and I thought Lara was going to give him boxing lessons I feel lesson. like you're just mad at him now <laughs> Uh, he can make the weight, though, because it's only two fights ago that he fought against Brandon Rios, and he made 152 pounds. So he can definitely make this kind of weight. 
yeah, well, he's obviously having struggles in, in, in whatever it was. Um, you know, it could be mismanagement, mistiming, but, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. And he's at, a, at the biggest fight of his career for a world title, an opportunity that doesn't come to most. Um, you know, that's, that's not a good look. When you hear it, you can see, by the way, the scale's still empty. We're still waiting for him to arrive in the building. Hasn't happened yet. It's 53 minutes past the hour. Um, you, when you hear of a situation like this and a fighter is struggling to make weight, who do you look at? Do you look at the fighter? Do you look at the team around him? I, both, I would say. Um, you know, it, it could be a combination of both. But more than anything, a lot of the times, it's the fighter's irresponsibility. You know, mismanagement, uh, you know, mistiming. You know, it, it's a bad luck for, for all parties, though. Mm -hmm. No, he's absolutely right. Both guys, both both parties. But usually, dude, you weigh in the night before you go to sleep. You know, you weigh in. You know, you get up in the morning, you weigh in again. You, you know where you're at. You don't eat anything. Look, you have, a, you have over 24 hours to replenish. Just do whatever it takes to make weight. I don't understand how you cannot make weight when you weigh in the day before. Uh, well, just so you know what will happen here, what the possible scenarios are, the fight will go on even if Alvarez does miss weight eventually when he does weigh in. If Alvarez does miss weight, Lara can still win the belt. Alvarez cannot. So the world title will still be on the line for Erislandi Lara. Uh, um, what about the importance of the fight for him? Because obviously I feel like uh, he's a guy that has... Uh, was at one time the longest reigning ch champion in this 154 pound division. How big of a step can this be to him re-establishing himself as the name in the division? A big step. Every fight, every t title defense is a big step to uh, to the recognition of being the best in that weight division or one of the best of all time. So, no, he wins this fight and there's bigger and better fights out there for him. Yeah, I think this this fight and, and the fact that uh, Alvarez is not coming in on weight at this time, gives a lot a little bit more confidence you know he may not be as prepared as he thought he might be so uh you know it's a little confidence builder for lara but it's still it's still not a not a good look for either if you're ramon alvarez and you have an incredibly famous brother in canelo alvarez incredibly professional fighter and you said that you want to distinguish your career from his you have a huge opportunity on fox on saturday night for a massive audience in america i, I don't understand no this ain't the way to do it obviously you know again it, again, he might be a guy who trains hard, he's disciplined in many ways, he just can't make the weight, then you shouldn't be fighting at this weight. So I, I really don't know. Can he make the weight or he can't? Like you said, a couple fights ago, he fought 152 pounds. Obviously, then it shows like lack of discipline. Uh, just to let you know, Eris Landilara will step onto the scale soon enough and weigh in. Uh, I assume we're going to allow him to then get out of the building so mm -hmm. that uh, we're still waiting on Ramon Alvarez, though no news of where he is at this point in time. Um, Eris Landilara, uh, stylistically, who do you see having the advantage in this one? Oh, Lara. Lara's fought all... No question. Every, no question. He's, had, he's fought every type of fighter before. I said he's a boxing technician, high boxing IQ. This guy is one of the best pure boxers in the sport. Yeah, Lara, Lara definitely has the advantage, but I wouldn't count on Alvarez. Although he might not come fully hydrated like he would want to, um, he might have a weight advantage and uh, might apply it well and might give Lara a rough time, but I, th I still have Lara winning. Well, let's give Arisandi Lara the opportunity to weigh in finally. Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Armory here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Premier Boxing Champions presents the official weigh-in for our World Championship main event of the evening brought to you by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing. At this time, please welcome to the stage with a record of 25 wins, three losses, and three draws. He has 14 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the former WBA Super Welterweight Champion of the World. Introducing Eris Lundy, the American Dream Lara. Well, fans, we are awaiting the arrival of Ramon Alvarez, but Lara is here ready to weigh in, step onto the scale, so we will bring him to the scale at this time. Reminding you, it's 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBA Super Welterweight Championship of the World. A very strict weight limit on this fight of 154 pounds. And now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the scale at this time, looking to regain his title. A world rank contender and former WBA Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Eris Lundy, the American Dream Lara.
So Erislandi Lara finally stepping up to the scale. He'll just be glad to get this over with at this point. Yes, exactly. So he can go eat and replenish. One hundred fifty-three point eight pounds, or one hundred fifty-three and three-quarter pounds for Eris Landi, the American Dream Lara. And we're going to send it back to the studio in Los Angeles. Kate, take it away. Jimmy Lennon Jr., uh, thank you very much. Uh, quite an afternoon, uh, eventful afternoon, not quite what we were expecting. Uh, Eris Landy Lara, from his perspective, you've obviously said this will make him feel comfortable. I I've done the work, I've weighed in, I was where I needed to be. Ramon Alvarez still not in the building, still hasn't come and stepped on the scales. Uh, Eris Landy Lara took a close and, and a controversial call as well, uh, a, a loss to Canelo Alvarez, to Ramon's brother. Was there already personal motivation in this fight? And does this now add to it, the fact that Ramon hasn't turned up, hasn't been here on time, hasn't acted in a professional manner? I would think so. I would be, I'd be motivated. because, Like I said, I thought, you know, a lot of people thought, including myself, that he outboxed Canelo. Now that his brother comes in, doesn't make weight, I'm gonna, I want to put a hurting on him. I want to, make, I want to punish him. Yeah, now he has the, uh, the opportunity to revenge that loss, the loss that he didn't quite deserve. You know, he fought a good fight with uh, against Canelo, and uh, Ray agrees with that. By the way, Ray, yeah. you thought he won. I, th I thought he won the fight. Mm -hmm. I absolutely thought he you won. You thought the same? I thought it could have gone either way. Um, you know, me as an underdog, well, I understand. He's, he's Mexican, so he's got to say that first primo. <laughs> no, that first primo. No, he's, he's not at all. Diplomatically correct. Not at all because I'm Mexican. Because <laughs> I'm the underdog. I know what it has to take. I have to win very, very convincingly, knock him down, and maybe even you know, be close to a stoppage. And win very convincingly on on each round. So, um, Lara me won being the fight. an underdog, I understand. <laughs> Lara won the fight. <laughs> All right, Ray. Uh, listen, thank you both for your company. Thank you for rolling with the punches tonight. The main event will go on. Ramon Alvarez will eventually weigh in. We're hearing. Uh, don't forget to tune into Fox tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern for PBC Fight Night. Lara against Alvarez. See you then. Thank you for watching. Well, if you enjoyed that clip, make sure you click uh, somewhere around here and subscribe from Fight Highlights to exclusive interviews. We have got everything you need as a boxing fan right here on PBC on Fox.